Hey, this, this ain't a porno, man. Get your crotch out of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm still trying to get out, get everything situated, man. <laughs> look, hey, look. I'm glad I was turned around and missed. <laughs> See, working out for me already. <laughs> I think you have a, a unique perspective on on Black Lives Matter that that maybe maybe people need to like stop and consider. But I definitely see you know some some truths and some lies inside the Black Lives Matter movement. What's the best way to stop it? Like you fracture you you fracture it, and you know you attack it from from different angles. And like I was telling Ocean, like. You know, what do you do? Do you jump off the bandwagon or do you try to take it back? It feels like there is, like you said, a divide and conquer kind of thing, like trying to create rifts between people. Even though it was supposedly Black Lives Matter out there in the streets, a lot of the buildings that were getting burned out, was, it was white people that were starting fires and doing a lot of stuff like that. So. And one of the first police cars that was windows busted out that shit was done by a cop people are like these guys are cops yeah the yeah, cops like, are doing it yeah, yeah you don't see regular protesters walking around in riot gear and like there's pictures you can see on the internet from that convention they got wires you know from a from like an earpiece or a microphone it's very simple and now there's people destroying things and all this stuff and it's 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 basically turning allies yeah, yeah, yeah. against them Walking down the street, full riot gear. There's a dude on the ground, and each of them just basically takes a turn kicking him as they're as they're going by. And this person was like, "Well, you know that wasn't America, right?" And I'm like, "So?" The mainstream media, their main job is always been a propaganda tool. So. Welcome to yet another Kitchen Sink Microscopy. I'm Eric Rosenblatt, and we'd love it if you'd like and share this video, subscribe to the channel and all that stuff. It'd be great. And I'm Casey Rochefort, and don't forget we write our own music, so stick around to the end. Um, not only because it's going to be an awesome episode, but because there's going to be awesome music at the end, which you can get at iTunes and Spotify and Patreon.com slash KSMVidcast. So... Eric, what do you think we're going to talk about today? Well, we're joined by um, two guests that uh, we've talked with before. And uh, <clears throat> so we've got, we got Ocean, we got Uncle Tip coming back again to talk. We'll have like some, maybe some kind of like round table discussion about all the current goings on, you know, the, Black Lives Matter stuff and and everything like that. I think I think it's going to be a great conversation. So uh, welcome, you guys. I'm glad. Oh, oh, it's good to be back, man. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's good to talk again. It's been a little while. Um, a lot of crazy stuff's been happening in 2020, and um, yeah, you, you know say that again. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, it's been the news of the year. <laughs> Yeah, that that's a good way to put it. <laughs> Definitely been a doozy. Um, doozy. Mm -hmm. So so I. There's a big word I can come up with right there. <laughs> so I I I've seen you uh, post a couple of videos and and you you've done a couple of videos on your own channel that have been pretty thought provoking lately. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, like just the. the I, I think you have a, a unique perspective on on Black Lives Matter that that maybe maybe people need to like stop and consider, um, you know, because uh, so so here's where I'm coming from. It like what what I'm seeing white people do right now is basically uh, lump lump all black people together and say 
this is offending all black people, but maybe it's not. So they're, they're basically just like speaking for all black people in a different way than they used to, you know, <laughs> like they're, they're kind of doing the same shit, but they're trying to make it a polished turd now, I guess. I don't know. Like that's, that's just what I'm seeing though. But like, what's your take? I mean, first of all, I want to say that when it comes to Black Lives Matter and me, I definitely agree with the sentiment of the movement and the people in the street. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to get it misconstrued because I'm a, I'm definitely a, a thought provoker. So I will I will say some shit that you gotta, you know, try to figure out what I'm talking about. And I'm not gonna necessarily I don't know how to spell it all out to make you see what I see or make anybody see what I see. But I definitely see, you know, some some truths and some lies inside the Black Lives Matter movement. But I, I don't wanna I don't want to come on here and tear it down, man. I, I, it's something that, it's a beautiful thing, but it, like you said, once, in, from, in my perspective, once the main, if the mainstream media presented it to you, then you automatically got to question it. And it's a lot of, it's a, it's a lot of big push behind Black Lives Matter right now. So I just say, do your due diligence and research it for yourself and see where it really mean to you before you know you just run out here and scream it. Cause, but we all, I definitely know that Black Lives Matter and I, if you uh, watch me and do my videos, you know what type of person I am. You know I'm not the type of person that sit up and say that Black Lives don't matter because I'm really an advocate for Black Lives. So oh, yeah. I just don't want to come on here and get that, get that misconstrued, man. I want your people to know that I definitely believe that Black Lives Matter Right. No, yeah. I, I think I think there's a difference between the the actual sentiment of Black Lives Matter and, and what the the uh, movement has started to morph into, like yeah. commercialization and stuff. That, you know? that was kind of what I was getting into is like or what I was going to get into. Um, <clears throat> there's a difference between like the concept of Black Lives Matter and Black Lives Matter Incorporated. Um, and right. I just want right. to. I want to throw out that both of you guys have your own YouTube channels and we'll put links in the description to both of them because they're both really good. So, yeah. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. We definitely appreciate it. You know, like for me, <coughs> with, you know, I support the Black Lives Matter, you know, movement, obviously, you know, look at my shirt, it's got, mm -hmm. you know, this is the name of a lot of people. Yeah. You know, that's good. They lost to a uh, sense of police brutality. But, you know, as me and Ocean were speaking earlier, man, throughout history, there have always been movements for change, different uprisings. And throughout history, there have always been people planted moles to disrupt the movements. You also have those people that are. Uh oh. We got te technical difficulties. Financial gain, to your point. The Black Lives Matter. Am I losing you? Uh, oh, like just you. for a second. It's the NSA. Don't worry about it. It happens every time. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> but you know, um, you know, with any movement, they're always divide and conquer, right? Yep. You know, so yes. You, you know, you get a movement and something that's that is gaining steam is causing changes, making people uncomfortable. So okay, now what's the best way to stop it? Like you fracture, you you fracture it. And, you know, you attack it from, from different angles. And like I was telling Ocean, like, you know, what do you do? Do you jump off the bandwagon or do you try to take it back? You, you know, because you got to keep the main thing the main thing. Like, there's always going to be people trying to profit, you know, off of whatever. And, you know, there's, there's more than one right way. And, you know, for me, um, I think we need our white brothers hand in hand, you know what I'm saying, to – to force this change. Like, we're not saying white lives don't matter. I'm not saying Asians or Latino. You know, I'm saying black lives matter. And in order for all lives to matter, we got to. You know what I mean? And, yeah. Um, well, it, it's it's the vision that Martin Luther King had. Yeah, like absolutely. Everybody getting along, you know, working together, overcoming the differences. Um, but, <clears throat> yeah, it... it, it 
it feels like there is, like you said, a divide and conquer kind of thing, like trying to create rifts between people. Like you could, like, uh, like you could just take for instance, right? Like, you know, since the uh, George Floyd thing, right? So you know, it was a lot of people in the street, a lot, of, a lot of protests, a lot of stuff happening in the street, right? But if you notice, if you pay close attention. Even though it was supposedly Black Lives Matter out there in the streets, a lot of the buildings that were getting burned out, was, it was white people that were starting fires and doing a lot of stuff like that. So it just, you got to be weird. It's, yeah, you know what? <clears throat> that shit pisses me off because it's like, yeah, you got a bunch of white people <laughs> throwing Molotov cocktails and burning out black-owned businesses and screaming Black right. Lives Matter. <laughs> like, oh. what the hell? Dude, I was downtown Atlanta the uh, first night of the protest, and I'm watching, and the police are dropping off bricks and shit. And I'm like, you know, because I'm up, you know, I'm up in the CNN building. Like, I gotta, I want to be there, but hey, I'm a year removed from cancer surgery, so right. I ain't getting too close to all that corona shit. But I want to, you know, show my support. But I'm looking, and it's like, yo, man, you know, y'all see this. And, you know, initially I'm thinking, well, maybe they're using to build a barricade. But no, they drop them off and keep it moving. And one of the first police cars that was windows busted out, that shit was done by a cop. Damn. Yeah. Yep. You saw that? You saw that too? <clears throat> yeah, bro, I was down there. Oh. Well, this kind of thing happens. It, it's it's not just this particular situation, but it's happened time and time again. You, you know, the the police essentially working with people to uh, trigger some kind of violence. Um, yes. You saw that at the G20 convention. Um, same kind of thing. People are like, these guys are cops. Yeah, the yeah, cops are like, doing it. Yeah, yeah, you don't see regular protesters walking around in riot gear and like there's pictures you can see on the internet from that convention they got wires you know from a from like an earpiece or a microphone mm. you know i know normal normal people don't have that kind of stuff to go down and protest you know what i mean the same same boots as the cops or something like that i mean they, they, or it, well we could i don't i don't even want to go into the g20 thing because that's that's a whole different tangent I mean, I have a police riot shield, but we're not going to talk about how I came about getting that. Uh, <laughs> just, just saying, anybody could get their hands. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think it's, it's it's really important to to make the distinction between people who are protesting and demonstrating and people who are just like breaking shit and stealing things. Yeah, and I'm with the, it ain't all white people out there that's breaking and stealing shit. It's some of us too. But you know what I'm saying? There are a lot of, you know, like like there's some shit I saw cemeteries, they got like, graffiti with Black Lives Matter. Like black folk, we don't hang out in cemeteries, bro. That's not <laughs> you know, the only reason we go to see to the cemetery to see a family member. Yeah, we see a family member, man. It ain't it ain't nighttime. We spray painting, man. We cleaning off graves and you know, dropping flowers. That ain't our thing. Well, yeah, and I feel like the 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 destruction that's going on. I mean, maybe, maybe some of it's intentional or something like that, but it, it undermines the underlying message of the whole Black Lives Matter movement. Like, right. it's very simple. And now there's people destroying things and all this stuff. And it's, it's, it's basically turning allies it, 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 against them. But you know, it underlines the message, but it also proves, a, it also sends another message that Look at these, this is why these people get killed in the street. Look at them, they stab them. This is how they operate, you know what I mean? So it, mm. it's sending it's in the message to the rest of the world. Cause you know, it's a, it's a microscope on police brutality against black people in America, but it's not only in America, it's all over the world. So they, white media, whatever, mainstream media, I don't wanna say white media, mainstream media, they main job is always been a propaganda tool. So. Right now, they they gotta push that. They pushing the image out to the world that this is what nine times out of ten, this is what the person had coming to them. Because that's what you correlate. If you if you never if you never met a black person, the only image you see is a black person getting locked up or him doing some foul shit. 
then you that's what you're gonna think. Like he probably had it coming, and it, it, it makes it easier to dehumanize us, so to speak. That's yeah. a really good point. Damn. Yeah, I I um showed a, a video to somebody of uh you know cops walking down the street full riot gear. There's a dude on the ground, and each of them just basically takes a turn kicking them as they're as they're going by. And this person was like, "Well, you know that wasn't America, right?" And I'm like, "So, like, these are human beings." So what, <laughs> right. I, I, read, I, read, sorry, I can't even think of the name of the group. It's a group of police officers. Like, like they basically a gang unit. They done took over to a few police. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Precincts in California. I wish I could think of the name of the shit. Uh, anyway, it'll come to well, me after we we'll, 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 so. we'll try to look it up and throw it in the description if if we can find it. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, but it's just crazy. It's like, and it's crazy, bro. It's it's crazy, but. That's like me and Tip were talking earlier, I know everybody, like, we got to get with Trump, and it probably is time to get with Trump. But Trump has played an essential role in America, really revealing itself to the world and who it is, man. So, I'm, you, you, you know I'm definitely not a Donald Trump fan. I'm not going to be in uh, advocate, advocating, let's go to the poll and vote for Trump. But I'm glad. This is what I've been telling people anytime I get a chance to. Trump held a mirror, a mirror up to America and made made America look at itself. You got this right now at this time. You showing, you know, you showing who you really are. You showing if you got that that built up hate in your blood. And I, I, I never people misconstrue and think that I come from a place of hate. But I don't have just as bad as I, I get on white people. I'm, I get on black people. I might just don't do it on my channel. Because I, you know, that ain't what my channel for. My channel ain't for, but I will. I'm, I am going to start getting on black people on my channel. But I, I get on black people, whatever color person, really everybody, I get on my nerves just a little slightly. So mm -hmm. I get, I dish it out to everybody. <laughs> well, I think that's the right way to be, honestly. You know, you, you self-reflection and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I'm just... And definitely, myself included. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, totally. I yeah, your your channel is just awesome. I I, I love it. And yeah, w whatever brings people together and makes people think and have discussions and stuff. I think that's a that's a positive thing. Um, and uh, so let, me, let me ask you this: What you guys think about this now? This is something me and him was talking about earlier. Do you think if uh, someone else had been president at the time all this COVID nineteen popped off? Uh, and specifically when George Floyd got killed. Do you think with another president in office, you think the reaction would have been the same? You think it would have been this type of uprising? Uh, I would say it would be different. Um, looking to the past and looking at like the, the swine flu epidemic okay. and the reaction, I, I, I think some maybe not all, but some of what's going on right now is very politically motivated. Yeah. Um, but that's just, that's, that's my own opinion as, as, as a little bit of a political outsider. Um, you know, and I'm and, the same way. I'm not, I'm not overly political, but I just think that, you know, to, to, to Ocean's point, Donald Trump put a mirror up to America, right? And like, for me, I can, I can deal with somebody that's maybe outwardly racist, you know, I work with some, you know, especially in the military. But, like, if I know how you are and how you're coming, like, I can deal with you. And, like, he, you know, he calls a lot of people to really take their hoods off and out themselves. And, you know, I think that he might have, you know, contributed to the, to the climate because that whole make America great, all go back to your country, go back to where you came from. You know, I think that shit was all like a big side of here. Yeah, like it was, it was a ticking time on waiting to go off, and then the slow response to the coronavirus, people being locked inside, all sports canceled, and that's all you got. And now this George Floyd thing is, you know, it's front and center. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, George I, Floyd, I mean, his death, you know, his murder, that, yeah, you know, yeah. at, the, at the hand of the largest uh, gang in America. That's that's the police force. Yep. And um, you know, I think that. Yeah, just the, just the tone, you know. Donald Trump helped make a lot of people 
comfortable being outwardly racist and shit. And they put, hey man, they put America on front street. They put the mirror in front of us like, damn, look at who we are. All yeah. the people that, that thought black people kept racism alive, it was a figment of our imagination. Now you see it. Eight minutes and 46 seconds. You see it. Yeah. I'll, I'll agree that, that Trump has, has basically flipped the light on and showed all the roaches scattering. Yeah, yeah, but I'm not going to go so far as to say that he did that with intention. No, I think no, 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 no. Yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you for that. I don't want to give him. No, he didn't do it yeah. intentionally. He just, he just, I'm giving no credit. No. Nope. <laughs> I don't, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of his at all. I'm not a, I'm not a Trumper. Fuck them. Yeah. But, you know, I, See, I will. People give me a fool for a Trump fan sometimes too, man. I, I think Hollywood, I think it's highly offendable to me that you, you could possibly confuse me for a Trump fan. I'm just, I just, I'm just glad, I just feel like he played a pivotal role in history. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like, love him or hate him, like, he's a product of his time. Like, there. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you have to burn something down and start over again, and Trump might just be, like, the uh, trash fire that's, you know, burning us down. Well, I, I've equated him to, like, a monkey wrench that you throw into a machine, and it just, like, shatters and explodes and stuff. Like, that. that's Donald Trump in the USA today. That's what he's doing, man. He's he blowing it up, and, and, and it's... It's a time. It's a, it's a, it's a chance for everybody to have a new beginning and to let the move forward. It actually, we actually, it's actually a beautiful time in the world right now because we actually got a chance to move forward. Right. Yeah. We got we got to address all of this shit now. We can't keep yeah. acting like this shit ain't going on no more. So whoever got to be uncomfortable. See, I've been uncomfortable for a lo- uncomfortable for a long time. So that's why I really don't feel bad about making other people uncomfortable so well, whatever got to happen but now is the time to go ahead and get everything out in the open and let's see what side of what side of history that we're gonna be on are we gonna be on the right side or the wrong side of this shit but it definitely everything came to a head 2020 man 2020 <laughs> was meant to make everything be clear so we can see where well, we, I- we headed as a nation and I, I also say, as much as this exposed uh, the races, the uh, people against progression, it also exposed some allies. Like there, there were people that I didn't know would be on the, you know, the side of Black Lives Matter. I gained allies and made friends, and you know, of the like that. It was unexpected, and so I'm I'm thankful for that because as well as it caused the races and shit to jump out in front. I got a lot of my white brothers, you know, that I didn't know was like, well, hey, hold on, this is fucked up. I got you, bro. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. there, there's also that. Yeah. Nice. You know, for that, for that, I'm thankful too. That's good. Yeah, you know, that old saying, hindsight is 2020. I think we're finding that 2020 is hindsight. <laughs> <laughs> 2020 is hindsight. In the present tense. Like, what the Yeah. Like we're we're looking back and going, oh, we've been doing things really shitty and, and look what it's got us you know <laughs> well and uh, what what you're saying ocean earlier like i i think is is really poignant like the the um that this is an opportunity to to move forward um and as long as people are actually having conversations i think we right. actually can um instead like I, it really bothers me when I see people like arguing and yelling at each other and shouting each other, each other down and stuff like that. That really troubles me because I think what we're doing right now is, is a lot more productive and can actually affect change. Yeah. We, 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 are implement, we implement a change right now and we've mm-hmm. been examples to other people to, go out and sit down and have these conversations with people that they work with and people that they come across. So we can try to take steps to a building of a future that, you know, I'm, I'm proud to be American. You might, I'm, I'm, I'm proud. I feel like I should be proud to be American. 
let me let me I want to make sure I word that correct. I should be proud to be American because my people built their country on their blood, sweat, and tears. So this this country, I still feel like this country is an ally to me. I shouldn't feel, you know, I shouldn't feel threatened just to ride down the street and see the police. They should, they should, I still feel good when I see the police. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So they're what we need to be headed to, man. So and until they're what we headed to, I feel like it's something for me to fight for. And I'm gonna keep on that. That's what I'm gonna keep on doing, man. I, if it's if it's any consolation, I've never really felt safe when I see the police. Like, and it's and it's just it boils down to, um, you know, people people earn your respect, right? Um, they they show you through their actions whether they're reliable or not. And anytime I've needed the police, they've fallen through. I ever since I was a little kid, I've seen police gunning down unarmed black kids like even even i i lived in a super like mid upper mid class i guess uh kind of mostly white neighborhood right and there was this black kid down the street that i would play with sometimes i didn't know him that well but he got shot in the alley and I, i forget how old i was i was like not even 10 and and that that was like one of my earliest exposures to to what what police represented you know and well and like you said the the police aren't that reliable unless you're talking about enforcing drug laws which i think are really at the heart of like a lot of this brutality um but that's that's just my own opinion and here's here's the thing that like is is positive about what happened well i don't want to say positive but what happened to George Floyd are, are fine. Uh, yeah, well, what happened to George Floyd sparked some actual like discussions coming to the table. Like maybe right. maybe nothing will actually come of it, but we've never really gotten this far in my lifetime, at least, mm-hmm. where where we're talking about completely restructuring the way the police work. You know. Well, well if, you remember like look at the way that the police were created, like. What was the like? What was the reason that they made police anyway in the beginning? To catch slaves, mm-hmm. like you know, that's that's what the police were taught. The rest their original job. You know, that 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 was their original job, right? You uh, know, it was to catch runaway slaves, and they even caught free like free black men and put them back into slavery. Now, over time, okay, slavery was abolished, but the prison system, especially nowadays, it's a, it's a for profit prison system and the police is you know it's all slavery free yep. labor that they get you know what i'm saying and the police to these days are still catching slaves like you know what i'm saying that's like like me and ocean we were born fitting the description yep. and like, it's just one of them things like i was always taught like you don't talk to the police like you you dodge them you know, you know what i mean my dad is 84 years old hmm. 84 hmm. so you think of what what he's saying yeah, like yeah, shout out to JD. And um, <laughs> you know, me and him talk all the time. So like, you know, for him being born in like 1936, you know, imagine the shit that he's seen and been through. Yeah. And so even even in his time as a black man, shit, you see the police, man, you get the fuck on. Like, you know, you don't say much, you don't look them in the eye, none of that. Cause that could be life or death. You understand? Yeah. <laughs> and all of that shit is still being passed down in the upper echelons. Like a lot of the times, like especially back when I was growing up, shit, the black cop will treat you worse than the treat you worse than the white cop. You know what I'm saying? But he, you know, he the equivalent of the quote unquote house nigga. Like he got a he got a P's master to show him that he part of the crew. Yep. He got uh, he got he got uh, extra stripes on top of his stripes. Yeah mm-hmm. man. And it's you know like I'm glad now like I hate that George Floyd had to die, you know, had had to be killed on camera the world to see for this fucked up system to be brought to his knees, but that's exactly what needs to happen. You know, because yeah. to your point, okay, this is the first time in my lifetime in 40 years of living that I'm seeing, you know, this kind of lens on the police and we're starting to see some level of accountability for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and I've I've talked to people that are have said to me, I just don't understand why 
one guy sparked all of this. And I'm like, you haven't been paying attention at all. Yeah. Have you? Because this has been going on. This has been brewing for decades. You see my shirt? People don't yeah. understand. Yeah. Yeah, it ain't just one guy. For centuries, bro. Exactly. It's Ramir Rice, George Floyd. We got Breonna Taylor. Well, and if you look at, like, I, I've, I've seen the, the footage. On and on and on. Well, I, I've seen the footage that, that was released, the body cam footage, and that guy is terrified of that cop. And yeah, it's pretty evident that, that he didn't act normally. Like, that was not a responsible, normal interaction. And I, I think a lot of people um, – don't realize how deep it goes. Yeah. Like why people are scared of cops. Um, and and oof, just he's got a right feel, man. Yeah, and like me, dude, I'm 6'6", 250 pounds. You know what I mean? Like I'm a I'm a large black man. Mm -hmm. and every interaction I had with a cop, it's always with them immediately reaching for their gun. Just because I'm a big dude. Like, I got no felonies. I'm a licensed, you know, gun owner. Well, and that's the thing. Like, if you look I'm at the video, veteran. if you look in the video, like, George Floyd opened the door and the cop drew his gun and pointed it right at his head. Why? Hmm. That's uh, not it, something that happens to the average person. Because, you, know, because you, know, you don't see a human. You, you see a target <laughs> if, mm -hmm. if you're the police in that situation you you see a mark you feel me yeah it's it, it's it, it's go time yeah yeah i mean i've yeah. 2020 is just so crazy i've been losing friends left and right just from you know you name it what whatever uh hot topic is in the news at the time there's somebody who disagrees with me and, and we get into some big fight and, uh, you know, but, but I, I, oh, it just, it, it drives me freaking crazy that people just can't like stop and look at other perspectives because every, I think everyone should be concerned about the police situation. And a lot of people say, well, yeah, of course there's some bad apples, but you know, and they, they always qualify it with a, but. But then really, if, you, if you think about it, qualify. yeah, if, if you think about it, like while the cops are busy doing all this screwed up shit to, to black people or who, whomever they just oh, dislike, they, they're, they're, not, they're not doing what they're supposed to do. Yeah. <laughs> they fucking with, they they, they with your car, they like your baby mama, all different kind of shit. <laughs> Yeah. Like with George Floyd, man, him and that cop, they, they did security at the same club, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the cop worked outside, Floyd worked inside, but see, it's pictures that was floating around. Me and Ocean talked about it. I was like, bro, I guarantee you he was mad. George Floyd was banging some of them white chicks, and he was <laughs> just waiting on the moment for him to fuck up. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Fuck up, I'm on your ass. He knew, he, knew, he knew who that was, man. He knew exactly who he was. That is entirely possible. That, 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 wasn't a, that wasn't a coincidence that he laid on that man. Like, they knew exactly who he was when he, as soon as he saw him. Because it was like, it was well, well known that Floyd was liked by people in the club. And it was well known that Chauvin wasn't because he was a dickhead. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, just the Apparently. expression on his face, the hand in the pocket, he was... He wasn't oh, even like he was. He was. He might have been whistling, man. Yeah, he might have been whistling the phone while he was leaning on that man's neck, man. Oh, he was enjoying it. Yeah, he he didn't have no adrenaline rush or anything. Ooh. He was just sitting there waiting for the dude to die. Nope. Didn't give a shit. No, nope, didn't give not one fuck. He wasn't gonna get up until after he was dead. He was gonna make sure he was dead. Yeah, right, so he's listen. gonna be dead before I get up. How 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 culpable do y'all think the other cops should be held? Like there was one dude that he was what new to the force. What was it, third fourth day? Something like that. <clears throat> yeah. Um. So yeah, one one of the cops did say, "Hey, I think you you should maybe let him up." And and the guy and Chauvin was like, "No." So I mean, like maybe that guy 
a little leniency, but they all should have been stopping. They all should have been decent human beings and said, hey, that's enough, man, that like back off. And hold him off. At a certain point, at a certain point, you turn from the police to a criminal, and, and I gotta be a police and police you at a certain point. Brother. Well, you know what? Think about now it like in this, the, right? In the midst of a murder. Let's let's say the four of us were somewhere together, right? Mm -hmm. And I kill somebody. Y'all tell me to stop, but y'all stand there and don't do nothing. We all get charged. Well, maybe not y'all two. Casey, you and Eric might be good. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Bad state of affairs there. Oh, man. But, but, but more than likely not, we all get charged with murder. And yeah. you know, I'm of the I'm of the, the, the train of thought that as a policeman, like you you're held to a higher standard, right? And mm -hmm. if you violate that standard, you should be penalized to a higher degree. Yep. Well, yeah, especially because yeah, the, the police yeah, like, can utilize lethal force they're charged with that ability so i yeah I, I have no problem with holding him to the highest possible standard like akin to the I guess god it, it, it has to be some kind of some kind of deterrent from you know what i mean you going way overboard with your action mm -hmm. man right now Mm -hmm. 10 years in jail, like, what's the lady name who killed both of them, John? Yeah. She got 10 years in jail, man, for going in that man's apartment and shooting him dead, man. She got that, that much? Well, y'all, excuse me one second, gentlemen. I'll be right back. I, I'm surprised she got that much, but she ain't going to do that much for sure. That's what I'm saying. She not even going to do that time right there, so that's not really the term you from. If you, if you feel like you're a race soldier and it's a race war going on, and yeah. you are that monster. You going it's it worth it to you. If you, you know what I mean, it's worth it to you to kill however many of them that you can. And I don't I'm people, it's some people that feel like that that's going on. And you know what I'm saying? And another thing, fella, that I you know, I don't, I want to I just wanna say I'm ocean, everybody know. I wouldn't be me if I went if I didn't bring this up to call. Do it throughout the uh, course of the conversation. I, mean, I want to know well, how, how do y'all feel, feel about black people, descendants, actual descendants of slaves who, you know what I mean, been suffering all of this, this oppression and been held down for this long amount of time? How y'all feel about reparation, bro? I, you know what? I, I've recently changed my mind about that because I used to think like that's, that's a lot of freaking money for one thing. Um, yeah. And it, and it's kind of hard to, you know, because there's like, there were black people from England. There are black people from Jamaica, you know, like the, to, to, to go and trace the lineage to who was actually a descendant of like a, an actual slave would be really difficult. But I now that, that I, that. now that I see how, like I, I watched that, documentary the 13th on on netflix and and it really opened my eyes to like all the systemic stuff and and how our entire economy is thanks to the free work that was done by the slaves and then after that the you know the the way that we manipulated them and 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 just kind of built our economy and built all of our bylaws and our unwritten rules around taking advantage of black people you know like we really like if we want to bring black people up to an even playing field uh it it kind of makes sense i mean we already do this with a lot of native american tribes you know like they they get cash payouts just for being born and stuff like if that can happen the jews I, get it still from the holocaust yeah mm -hmm. yeah so i mean it's it's not like it's without precedent Man, look, that something like that can happen we just had a stimulus shit damn there you go like all of yeah. a sudden we got the money for that i mean don't get me wrong that's that's kind of screwing the economy up but like I, I already think we need to burn it down and start over so what better time to oh. basically make amends and and oh, yeah. and and, and I don't know. Maybe I'll give Eric a, a chance to answer before I keep going because I can rant on. <laughs> well, okay. Let me have some more beer here. Um, ooh, that, that's almost empty. Um, I, 
I think, you know, though I would prefer for the actual slaves to get reparations uh, like they did with the Japanese after World War II, the internment camps and all that stuff, I don't think there's, there's a wrong time to make amends. Um, I, I, it's important that we make a distinction and, and figure out who it is, who, <clears throat> you know, the people who actually are descendants of those who have suffered from slavery and have the people who are descendants of slave owners pay for it. You know, I'm, I'm of Scandinavian descent, so I, I, I don't really have much skin in the game in that regard. See, but uh, we've, we've benefited from the hundreds of years of, of the wrongdoing, though. So, it, like, in a way, we're culpable indirectly. In some way, but, you know, sins of the father fallacy, you know, I mean... No, that's maybe, true. That's true. Maybe, but, uh, you know, I, I'd be willing to, to put a little bit of money that way. Um, but nevertheless, like... Like, you know, it's not all money. Me. We can figure it out. Yeah. yeah, it's not all money. Like, it's, you know, it's money, it's land, mm -hmm. it's um, <clears throat> access to equal education and loans. You know, and... I'm all for reparations, but I'm not for a free ca cash grab because all it's going to do is end right up back in the hands of the, uh, of the oppressor. That, you yes, I mean? exactly. I like, it, it is going like to be twisted. Financial literacy. Some yep. type of, uh, you know, like a checklist, things you have to do. You know, okay, yeah, because it's not that hard, you know what I mean, to to test and find out who comes from slaves. You know, we got Ancestry.com and find your 23 DNA. 23andMe. Like, yeah, you know, like we got all different types. Like DNA technology is a motherfucker and a half now. It'll, mm -hmm. be, it'll be simple, you know, to find out. Because uh, if you find a slave owner like, like me, you know what I'm saying? My last name is Allen. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. I've been to family reunions and I got some white cousins. And I'm 10, I'm 100% sure that that side of my family was the slave owners. Like I'm certain of it. And so it ain't it ain't as hard as you think. Uh -huh. um, and it won't take as much research, but the thing is there has to be, you know, a way to do it. Because just giving out lump sums of money and shit, that ain't it. That'll oh, call it that's a really, Dude, that is a that is that's a good point. Like, do do people think like some cash is going to undo all of the harms from the past? Like all of this injustice that's occurred? Like, I don't think you can. Like, you can't right. apologize enough. You can't pay out enough money. Any any amount that we could feasibly come up with and and still have a stable economy would disappear in you know a pretty short amount of time like it, it it's not like you could retire on it or something yeah but uh, it needs to be that kind of amount because fuck the economy if you ain't have it off the backs to the slaves right yeah you know, like you gotta read like you gotta look deep in the mirror for real and like you know what i'm saying i'm gonna hold like i got white weathers i'm gonna hold to the fire the same way that i hold my people to the fire like as uncomfortable as that shit thinks it sounds think about my great grandmama getting raped by white man john allen and shit you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and my great great granddaddy having to deal with that shit or get his ass beaten raped and sent the fuck on somewhere and still got to go out there and pick that cotton so yeah that's just mm -hmm. uncomfortable in a motherfucker especially when i think about my history so to pay that shit back yeah it's some enough shit fuck yeah you're right it, it should be enough to retire on it should be enough that my kids 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 ain't got to worry about shit because a 400 year head start off a of brutality rape and murder Shit, that's a big debt to pay. This is yeah. nothing, absolutely zero, nada, without the blood, sweat, and tears of women. You gotta look at it like this, man. The white man in America, man, had at least a 200 year, 100% profit return on everything that they, on everything, man. Do you, right now, what, what, what's a good profit return right now if you're a business man? What's a good profit return to? If you, if you spend, if you thirty percent, the motherfucker had two hundred, a hundred percent, probably two hundred percent. Are you fucking all the women? That, you know, what? I'm sorry for being like that, but you, I gotta be like that though. But, but just on the for as far as the money go, if they had, it was a two hundred year 
a hundred percent profit, right? So you got to pad your pad your accounts, and you know you got not to mention freelance. Go ahead. Don't forget the freelance. Mm -hmm. Freelance and you know the shit is just I can't even really I can't really even articulate what the way it should how 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 deep this shit run to me, bro. Because but I definitely feel like that we deserve financial compensation. And, and I feel like the, at least it should be a million dollars a piece for every black man person in America for the next 200 years. There were, I mean, T.I. working, T.I. been listening to a lot of the black media itself, but T.I. working on a plan. Uh, uh, it ain't no necessarily no plan, but as far as something that you could look at and say, oh, this is what reparation might look like. I don't think it's necessarily exactly what reparation looked like, but he, he got a, a, a letter, an open letter that he wrote to the laws of London. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Kind of illustrating the reason behind it. And it's just that, you know, we blood, sweat, and tears. And like you said, the, our, the killing field that our, our ancestors had to see they, they mamas and shit raped on and all that shit, bro. Well, look at so modern day, it, look at modern day slavery now with the prison system. That's some yeah. bullshit too. Like that shit's still going on. You mm -hmm. feel what I'm saying? Like that shit's a multi-billion dollar industry right down in my own town, man. They got private fucking probation. You break a law, you actually go, dude. I got out. I got out the military and went back to my own town. I was there for three weeks. I got a loud music ticket. One hundred and thirty-four dollars that they wouldn't let me pay off. Put me on freaking private probation for six months, bro. <laughs> I'm wow. like, what is DSI? Like, mm. you know, these these people, like, you know, the sheriff is there, but it's a private company. And like a lot of jails and prisons, think about it, man. America got way more people locked up here than like the rest of the world combined, man. Well, yeah. and a lot of that comes down to the drug war. Honestly, like a lot, which, which was that. which was very racist in. In yeah, its creation too, and yeah, they bring and yeah you like, drop it off and then lock you up for it. Yeah, yeah, it's like you pay someone eighty cents an hour and you say, well, "Look, it's not slavery; they're making money." Like, no kind of bullshit, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, and and that's you know, not, talking about funny, reparations and stuff, like, what is the price of a human life? How can you? But you see, know, it, like, it, it, but that beside the point. The point is that. We need something that we can, we need some stability. Right now, 90% 90, 90 of black people or even more, they, they got to, if they check on call next week, they might get put out. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? This is, this is the majority of black people. Don't, you, you might, you see, you might see the celebrities. See, that what, that what, they, they want black people, whoever they might be, whoever they is to you. They want black people to live vicariously through, Whoever do which one one of us do got the money do Jay Z, or Oprah Winfrey, but we, for the most part, if my check don't come, bro, it's a fucking struggle over here. You understand what I'm saying, bro? That's for that's for me and that's for a lot of people. I ain't gonna I'm not sitting up and saying no no black people aren't doing well, but what I'm saying is, for the most part, stability. White they were they were the white person. They were, from where I'm standing, they would look like a white person got over a black person. You got room enough to make a mistake. Yeah. And they come from, you know what I'm saying? They come from years and years and years of the system being set up for you to win at my expense. It's so opportunity, that's why, like, yeah. that's why I feel like I'm old conversation because, you know, it, it, it never was set up for me to win and it was set up again for me to lose at all odds unless I was at extremely lucky, talented, but, you know, that's, that's just one man opinion, and I ain't trying to take over to everything, but it, I, I do feel strongly <laughs> about the, the, the topic, you feel me? <laughs> so, so, so let's say hypothetically, I'm running, I'm running for president on the kitchen sink microscopy party, and uh, my, my platform for reparations is I, I, I'm going to come up with, with a plan that that will have cash payouts, you know, like a certain amount a year, 
but it tapers off. But we're also dumping money into black neighborhoods for schools and business loans and stuff like that because you yes. got to build that, opportunity too. That was exactly what I was going to talk about. That that you know a lot of this comes down to education. Yeah, like, you and, can't and just do one or the other because like if you if you just throw all your money into education, well, they still got to wait twelve years to get the education. Well, you don't have to spend money on the education. It's a matter of having good education. Yeah, but um, I mean that tends to take money too. So well, sometimes um, it it depends. But yeah, it it, it it's really sad that 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 right, in these right now. But right now you are at a point. Right now, as a black man, you are at a point where you feel like. White people been telling me what to do and what been best for me the whole fucking time. The white man been telling me what I need to do and, and, and what, how I should feel about this, who my hero should be. So what made me feel like if I put all my faith in a white man again, that he ain't just gonna lead me down another fucked up road that, you know what I mean? No offense to anybody, but that's what, that's who we, that's how we been doing this and well, let's see. Let's 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 see what the, the almighty white man say. And that it ain't work that good for us. So I feel like it's some brilliant black people if they got the opportunity to be powerful and be the, the leaders that they supposed to be in and have the stability to go out here and lead and not have to worry about everything crumbling they all get because killed. of money. <laughs> go ahead, bro. No, no, I said those guys all get killed though. The ones that's you know, actually moving in the, in, in the right direction, passing along the right. That's why we got to why we got to why we got to rid the world of white supremacists so they won't get killed. Yeah, yeah, man. My, you know, my thing is, yeah, I think I think the I think the cash payment should taper off after about two hundred years. You know, what I'm saying I think that we shouldn't pay taxes for shit a hundred years at least. Well, that's actually like a different yeah. plan. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, I was going to bring that up. Actually, it's like why why should you be paying for your own payments? You know, like <laughs> so here's, here's another thing. Though. I wanna see, like I want to see actual like swimming pools and uh you know actual swim centers in every black community, because when I went to the Navy, man, I saw a hundred people that couldn't swim. Ninety nine of them was black, and it was one Mexican dude. No white people. And and that shit there in itself is, is rooted in racism. And I went through that shit as a kid. You know what I'm saying? But my mama made sure I learned how to swim. You know, and that goes back to slavery days. They didn't want the slaves to know how to swim because they knew they would get away. And even now, black people get kicked out of swimming pools because that's systematically embedded in white people that black people don't belong in pools. Well, hmm. that goes back to the whole Prussian education system. Um, <clears throat> but that's an totally different episode um yeah i hey fellas i'm sorry i didn't say it's gonna be some it's gonna be some fucked up comments in the comments <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah yeah i mean like it's it's hard to say what what the perfect yeah answer would be like i i would really i mean i, I can't speak as as a black person but i i would just like the George Floyd situation, I, I I would consider a huge win if it at least got on the table for once. Like I don't think it's ever really been on the table. Like they they promised you land and and, and like a horse or something and never delivered, and that was probably the last time it was on the table. You know, well, like the the Rodney King thing, because uh, I remember the nineties, um, and that was a really big deal. Uh, but it didn't really affect any kind of change. It didn't gain any kind of traction. And no, for a very yeah. short time, the LAPD was like walking on glass. They were like being yeah. careful. And, th and then it was just back to the status quo. Yeah, th th this like galvanized everybody. Everybody recognized this as like bullshit. So I, I, I think this is a turning point, I hope. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, what do you think? You got it. You got it. It, it it's a uh, black people are at a different phase than they were back then when when that shit happened to Rodney King. Right now, it's like 
and I really accredit it to more, more to a generation after me. It's the younger generation that, like, you know, they they kind of fearless about everything. You know, sometimes it's to a fault, but at other times it's to the point where it puts so much pressure on the system. You notice that all these changes that they came about, and I came about in the last six months. It ain't been no fucking vote in the last six months. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's a good point. So, you know what I mean? You it, know. It ain't, so, that's that why I, I say Joe Biden, fumbling, bumbling, Joe, as I love to call him, <laughs> he, might, he, might, he might stumble into being the president this year. But only because Donald Trump is such a fucking idiot that he can, he's the only person that can talk himself out of being the president. <laughs> so, so, you know what I mean? So, and I think he might, he probably did. All, all he had to do was be quiet, but it just, but without the point where I was trying to make, even if Joe do become the president, it won't be because black folk put him in. And it, I think that it's a, a, a lot of, enough for us that's saying that we're not going to vote anymore until it's a president running on the merit that he going to do something for us and all of us. And it's growing more and more every day, man. So it, it might, the Democrats might do for this or not, but it won't, if they, if they do lose, it will be because not enough black people went out and voted. And it's like, we're at a point like, why? What is the point of keep on feeding into the system that never feed back into us? So there's just, well, well, a portion, a good portion of black America is right now, man. Yeah. This is one situation where I think social media is actually not a boon to society. Like it's actually really uplifting this movement because uh, it, it's, it's something that you can't, well, I, I won't say can't, uh, but it's something that's really hard to censor. It's, re it's really hard to make sure every voice is following a certain narrative, you know, because it, Right, right, it's impossible. Right. It's, it's, it's impossible to control it to that nitty gritty little detail. So you know your yeah, your right. yeah your friend group or whatever. If a lot of them are behind this social justice thing, you're becoming exposed to all the all the bullshit that black people right. have put up with. I I'm in that group. You know, like I, every right. day it seems like I I learn about some more bullshit that that your ancestors have have gone through and that you've gone through like it's it's totally eye-opening and it's never been in the mainstream media it's never been in our history books because you know history books are written by winners and you know like it's i think it's a really good thing like for all the negative crap for all the friendships to get ruined by social media on the whole I think humanity will become better because everyone's getting a voice. Right. Oh, I agree with you. I agree totally, man. You get a chance to see it's it, it, it made the world so much smaller. And you gotta you gotta pay attention to you know what what's happening. And you just gotta you gotta you gotta see different perspectives now. Yep. Yeah, and for every like half friendship that you lose on Facebook, <laughs> you gain a whole friendship. Yeah. So, I, if, yeah, definitely. What do you guys think? Um, you know, I was thinking like, do you think racial relations in the U S are getting better or worse now as a result of all this? Ooh. Tip, tip, you, you, take, you go first, Tip. Um, I want to know what you think, bro. Okay. I won't, I don't, huh. I honestly think they've gotten a little better in, in, uh, in some aspects. And in others, I think they've gotten worse. Mm -hmm. um, I think you got more people that are aware of it. You know what I mean? That are like, Conscious that can say, okay, it exists. Like it's more, it's more acknowledged. Um, I don't know. It's all relative. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a hard one, man. 
Um, that's a tough question, bro. Yeah. yeah. Well, in what ways do you think it's gotten worse, though? I mean, look at look at the well, police. I can, I can. I'm sorry. I can. What, what, what I, the one way that it's gotten worse, bro, is like that 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 out def, that all way out right. You know, he ain't scared to show his face no more. You know, he like. If he if he hard cold white supremacist, they coming out and they you know like I I, I read a shirt I seen the dude at the store the other day, he had a shirt on he said uh, I'm white, I'm a Trump supporter, and I somebody gun you know what I mean and you know he fit the, he fit the description and everything of what I look like when I say oh that's a white supremacist I can just pick I don't need to see I don't need to. Hear one word he said in my fucking say, oh, that's a white supremacy right there. You know yeah. what I mean? So that that's what I can say. They they used to be more in hiding. So I don't I don't necessarily consider that worse though. I consider it better because I don't I don't need to have to guess about you. So yeah. but no, that's a good point. But yeah, you can see where it's worse at the same time. Yeah, it's it's kind of kind of subjective whether that's a good or bad you know, thing. I I think the lines are are more clear now. Yeah. You know, these days, um, right, so right, right. Up, I'll say it's better. You know what I mean? You're, you know, whichever side of the line that you stand on is, is, is becoming more and more obvious, you know, so, uh, you know, take that for what it's worth. Yeah. Then most black people are really just they want equality, man. We just want we just want an equal equal playing field. You know, yeah, no that's... matter it's a, sometimes it's a harsh message because you 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 starting the game out from so far behind that you you gotta be aggressive if you want to be heard at this point, man. So that that why it, it, it probably come out like that, but it gotta be like that. It, that's the only way that that's the only way that we can be heard at this point. And yeah. it take all kind of, it do take like somebody from speaking from my brother to perspective saying that, well, you got to look at it from this point of view too. So I definitely respect, man, we do this all day anyway. So it yeah. take all kind of, and we, we disagree and we, we disagree on some things and we agree on a lot of other things. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, I think, I think our society in general is just way too fixated on, on profit because if if you really if you really like a, ascribe value to things at, at least from my perspective if i'm looking at like how much money i might have in in my wallet versus how much freedom uh, you, you guys you know friends of mine have compared to me i would much rather have less in my wallet if it meant you guys had more freedom you know, like I, I would rather pull the rest of the human race up to the same line and let us run together side by side than to be like, look at all this shit I got and I can, you know, live comfortably and my kids can live comfortably and blah, blah, blah. Not that I have kids, but uh, yeah, I was going to say that, you know, don't, don't, you know don't, don't get it twisted. Like I consider myself successful. Like I got three college degrees nice. you know, and on my own crib. Got a few cars, like I, you know, I've retired once and shit. I just turned forty. Um, you know, I do, I do pretty well for myself, but I bust my ass. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, yeah. You know, to be honest, man, I got, you know, a white friend of mine. You know, we talk all the time, and uh, you know, he, I won't say I had to work twice as hard for half as much. But I will say it was a lot of doors closed in my face and opportunities taken off the table, you know, because of, you know, what I look like. Right. That, that, that's it's totally good. shitty. Like, uh, oh, I, so I, I think we're, we're coming up on like an hour now, but I, I want to, ask the question like what do you guys think about all this like hyper fixation on everything everything being racist like the whole world is racist what do you think no that 
that you know that's that's one of them things because I'm I, I don't I don't I don't like to call everything racist because a lot of shit ain't racist. It's just you know this dude's an asshole or this dude's an asshole. Mm -hmm. Ignorance, and, basically. You know what I'm saying because I man I got you know dudes I call brother that can come lay at my crib. I can go stay at theirs around each other's cribs and they black, they white, they Mexican, they Puerto Rican, mm -hmm. you know, and being in the military, like exposed me to that. Like, but I didn't grow up like that anyway, man. I, you know, I was raised like the heart of somebody matter more than the color of their skin. We all the same at the end of the day, any fucking way. Oh, hell yeah. Yep. Oh. And, well, fellas, if I had to put my hand on the Bible, you know, I would say, I ain't, I'm not, I may have been accused of being a race batter before in my life. You know what I mean? I ain't going to tell no lie. I don't necessarily think that everything is racist, but I do got a, a special talent for pointing out the racism and shit. So, you know what I mean? Not, I do it for, I do it for <laughs> asshole purposes sometimes, you know? <laughs> and I, you know, I do it because I, you know, I really feel strongly about this black shit to my heart. And I, you know, I, I and. Cheers you know, to being a racist, by the, or an asshole, by the way. Not a racist <laughs> asshole, but a, an you asshole know, about racism. Man, I, it, <laughs> and you know, I, it just, it, it's, it's, it come down to tell me to see the racism in the life. Like if, I, if my son or my, my wife was here, they'll tell you that, you know. They, that's a running joke with my people that I know how to turn every situation into a black white situation. But you know, I, 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 a lot of time, a lot of time it's not a human, even if it's only to point it to me. But yeah, I, I I do that sometimes. So I will come on here and be one hundred percent transparent and say, if I ever, if you guys ever see some shit that I post that offend you guys, man, it just me being an asshole. And I usually don't think about you until after I post it. I'm like, God damn, I'm about chasing my friend. <laughs> no, I, I've never once seen anything that you posted that I've felt like personally attacked by, just so you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I, the, the thing I see as, as a white guy, like that runs in circles with a lot of social justice warriors and stuff. The thing I worry about is diluting the word racist. Like, Oh, yeah, I was going to get to that. Yeah. yeah, like it's thrown around so much. Like I had somebody call me a racist today and like it pissed me yeah. off that they did that, but it didn't piss me off enough. And that's because it's being overused. And, right. and what it, here's what it was mm -hmm. about, right? So somebody posted a meme that, white dreadlocks are cultural appropriation and and i was like okay number one race and culture aren't the same thing let's not conflate those uh <laughs> number two i, I, I mean that. I that. vikings irish uh, right. people from india egypt you know they've all had dreadlocks like it's not no. just a black thing no. <laughs> i was stationed in oslo norway yeah. And, uh, I, you know, I lived out for 18 months. I was stationed there, and I got familiar with the Viking culture. And to your point, yeah, I mean, dreadlocks was, you yeah. know. I mean, I mean you know. it's it's a hairstyle. Like, if, if, I, if it were just a black thing, and I wanted to wear a hairstyle that was black, I, I would think that's like, hey, I really appreciate how that looks. I want to look that way. Why isn't that a now, compliment? I just didn't have quite the tight dreads, like, you know, like they came from Africa, but yeah, they did have kink hair. Yeah, you know, yeah. From, you know so I, it was like stuff like that feels like delusion to me. Like, really, you want to call that racist? Like, I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, I would. It just it's, it's it's easy to be offended if if you choose to be. That's why you gotta you gotta choose. Not it, life feels about trusting. So you if you're a black man and you're hard on you, it's easy to be offended by it. By anything that a white person say, if you don't, especially on social media, I can't understand. I can't really get the tone that you said that. Not trying to make no excuses for it. This is a, something that I do. I always play the devil advocate. You know what I mean? So it's just, you know, I don't. It's it, it, it is easy. I I've been offended in some instances by where probably one even that serious. So you know, he, he probably was just tripping on some shit. 
So I wouldn't take it too serious if I were you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's that's the one thing about social media and, and texting and stuff like that is you lose like 60, 70 percent of what communication really is, you know? Context. Yeah. Like body language, inflection, you know, like every, everything that goes into uh, tipping off somebody, whether or not you're making a joke or sarcasm, you know, like it, it, there's this. Let me, let me, let me, let me say this. It's, okay, I work with a dude, right? It's a white dude. He got he kind of a big dude, right? Now, me and the dude, cool. You know, we ain't cool. We cordial. I see him. Hello, how you doing? Whatever. It, it's all right. You know, good vibes between me and him. Whatever. He uh-huh. he definitely don't consider himself no racist. Okay. If if I if you had to ask him, he like I'm not no racist. But when George Floyd got killed, right? You know, it was it was tension. It's black and white tension. And, you know, I I I wear my blackness proudly, no matter who around. You know what I mean? Yep. So it so uh. We ended up having to have a conversation. And you know what he told me? He said, he said, now if you to make a long story short, it came down to this this statement right here. He said, uh, if you can say I can't breathe, you can breathe. But he ain't so you know what I mean? They're like, so uh, do you see the point I'm trying to make yeah. right here? No, yeah, like that. I, I totally a hundred percent get where you're coming from because I've felt that same thing talking to people about the same situation. Like I I'm like, are you really trying to justify what happened by, you know, like I've had people be like, what well, he was, he was a lifelong violent criminal. I'm like, even if that's true, uh, due process is a thing. So like in this and moment, the, do you think he deserves to die that way? <laughs> the criminal track record of Dro- George Floyd was like drugs, and to- so, totally irrelevant to that situation yeah. at that moment. Yeah, you know, like he did not that, have that's, died. Yeah, that's the whole point. Is like what happened to him has nothing to do with his past. Nothing. Yeah. It it should be entirely in the moment. So like then, so then what? So then what I'm saying like it's hard to say if if you are if if I'm dealing with a white man if I don't know you personally then it's hard for me to say that you're not a racist. If, unless I know personally that it's hard to pick them up for me. You know, yeah. I understand you, you, gotta, you gotta be open-minded, but I'm, you know, we just having a, a candid conversation right here. And I feel like I'd be doing an injustice if I ain't just tell the truth, the whole truth. So it, it's, a, it's hard to say, oh, that's a good white person right there. You know right. what I mean? So it's like, you, if you were black, in America, and you've been dealing with this shit your whole life, you got to approach the situation from almost a, a standoffish, you know what I mean? Let me, I really don't want, I can't have much to do with that white person. No, the, the least amount that I got to do with them, the better. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. I, from, no, that's, from my point of view. That's, that's a well-earned skepticism right there. But this, like, you know, like, this infighting between white people like I'm, I'm going to go ahead and call this white on white violence, <laughs> just yeah. just to be tongue in cheek about yeah. you know like people that say, well, we'll look at black on black violence, you know. Well, this white on white violence is yeah. like people being like, I'm more socially aware than you are, and you're a fucking racist, you know. Like, and and they're just basically yeah. like going at it with each other and and not really trying to get any like real change moved forward. It it just Oh, it drives me crazy. I guess we, I guess we, we, we in some totally different groups, huh? On, on, on social media. Huh? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> See, man, I'm, man. I got, like I said, I got friends of all walks. I got one friend that, you know, Ocean's like, man, I don't know why you keep this dude. <laughs> <laughs> I seen some like, of your friends make some. Crazy ass comments, yeah. man. Oof. You know what I'm saying? And I do my best to respect, yeah. you know what I'm saying, to respect people's opinion, especially ones that, you know, like I know personally, I served with, I've been to war with them and back. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, when you're in the middle of nowhere with somebody and see, you know, in certain situations, like you get to know the soul of a motherfucker. And, yeah. uh, 
you know, I know some dudes that Jason is Jason is racist. Like, but not when when it comes to me. You know, like he look at me and not that I'm like some major success, but he feel like every black dude could be me just by hard work. But like I told him, like, dude, you were stationed with me and a dude, you know, I got carjacked. Well, attempted to get carjacked and I shot the dude. Because <laughs> I'm licensed to carry. And um, so I called the police, you know, they come and said the ambulance come for this dude and said, I'm big and black and I get arrested. Cause that was 2005, they just had the stand your ground law uh, enacted in Florida, I was in Jacksonville. And um, dude, I I went through some shit. I, I bonded out, spent money for a lawyer. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? Like this dude was in a stolen car and shit, like he got a, you know, a gun with no numbers and shit on it. He got all types of priors. Like I'm active duty military, no record, military ID concealed. As motherfucker, I called you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm, even on top of that, man, like, you know, the ship I was on, you know, my, my captain or XO actually at the time, white dude, you know, all of a sudden he didn't, trust me with a gun no more. And I went through some shit. And uh, you know, like I was telling Jason, man, I had to get a lawyer and actually fight that shit. Cause you know, they was trying to bust me down in rank and all kind of shit, man. And I'm like, yo, so I can defend your shit, but I can't defend my own life. And uh, That's crazy. Yeah, and, and you know, Jason's like, well, damn. Thought on it a minute. And he's like, well, that didn't stop you from making rank yet. Yeah, to you, it didn't, you know what I'm saying? But it slowed me down for two years from making E5 to E6. I was on the fast track. And uh, I still got there well mm -hmm. under the average time. But, you know, it was just a point like our margin, my margin for error is so much smaller as a black man than my white contemporary. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Like for all of the shit that I went through, even with the police, and then back on the ship, I was on the USS Carney. And, uh, you know, shout out Sail Block 64. That was a joke. It was DDC. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, like anybody tell you, like, dude, that shit was, you know, I didn't, like, I just had to fight for my right to fight for my right to defend myself. Like, what type of shit is that? Because yeah, I'm bullshit. Like, I trust you with a gun any day. Yeah, um, man. Yeah, I mean, it like the the military is supposed to be this like brothers in arms kind of thing. I mean, like the police have that down pat, you know. <laughs> and and uh, by by the way, that reminds me. I I totally want to give you a shout out, not only for for serving our country, but uh, congrats on a year free of cancer. Hey man, one year cancer free, brother. Yeah, hell yeah. Uh, yeah, back I, up, I'll say back down to two forty five now. I. Have yeah, dude, I was 265 before surgery. I got all the way down to 212. Oh, dude, I was a fucking stick. <laughs> oh, hey, look. look. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. And, uh, I got back up to, like, shit, like 258. And, yeah, you know, my doctor was like, all right, fat ass. You know, you got to <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. Well, you know, I'm back able to exercise now, man. And this shit, I work from home, so. I was yep. back in the pounds, but yeah, man, feeling good. You know, the hair didn't quite come back, but it's all good, man. I'm still I, too, too, too. I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my shit came in all spotty. So. Yeah. Hey, but see, you got a nice shaped head, man. My head is all fucking lumpy. I don't know. <laughs> oh, no, that's, you don't have no lumps. What are you talking about? No, it looks good to me. Yeah. I got this. I got this point going on. Like I don't know. Dude, I got a hook back here. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's not on camera. <laughs> Over y'all here, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Why? Well, oh my god. <laughs> this has been an amazing conversation. Yeah, we gotta do this again. Yeah, this is always a good 
good conversation and and i i i really hope that like you know like that there's something poetic about two pasty white dudes and two black dudes you know like just talking about you know like being humans together and like i i feel like that that's like warm and fuzzy feelings for me and i hope it's i hope it's that way for everyone watching me too man I, you know what the hard conversations sometimes show us that we way more similar than we are different. Yes, so, you're here. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, considering we've got like 99.999996% same DNA, it makes sense when you yeah. think about it biologically. But, you know, like people all always look at the aesthetics and, and they're like, we're so different. Like, fuck off. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> 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 yeah, man. It, it's been fun indeed, fellas. We definitely got to do it again. Oh, yeah. Oh, all the time. Yeah, it, it's it's more important now than ever, actually. Yeah. Well, it's real I, cool. Real what's cool. that? Uh, while, you know, while it's on my mind, uh, I'm, I'm actually relaunching my channel. Just, I've been doing some thinking with everything that's going been going on now man i'm relaunching as a something for everybody podcast and uh you'll you'll have that coming here real soon cool so, yeah you know look at my friends list like i got a lot of varying opinions and personalities man and i want to get them on and yeah you do you know, have <laughs> conversations man yeah dude yeah i'm all about that that's that's cool link Definitely. in the description yeah mm. Ocean to go, man. Check me out, man. I'm, I'm dropping. I'm dropping frequently. Thought provoking, pushing the line. Definitely, definitely not what you thought I was gonna say. Yep. <laughs> so get at me. It's good <laughs> stuff, channel, man. Uh, yeah, appreciate that, it. I appreciate that. And that, now that I'm in Memphis, man, I, I'm thinking a, a weekend road trip, and I'll come see you guys or something. Hey man, come on down, brother. You're more than yeah. welcome. Hey, I'll give you some of this good barbecue, man. Show you how we do it. Oh, yeah. Oh shit. And I'm all the way in Washington. God damn it. Hey, hey, just just hop on one of those uh COVID infested planes and get your ass over here. <laughs> yeah, just travel in the cam suit, man. Come on down. <laughs> oh man. This is an awesome conversation. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, Man, like, I am not even finished with this giant fucking beer. Oh, man, look. I went, I went through two of these. I'm feeling a little... <laughs> <you know? laughs> I smoked at least two of them over here, so... <laughs> this, this beer is almost as hung as I am. Hey, what, is, <laughs> what, you, what is that? What you drinking? It's uh, from Bosco's Brewery here in Memphis, Isle of Sky Scottish Ale. I like darker beers, and I can't find them down here, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> but this, this one's pretty dark, so it's, it's pretty tasty. Um, yeah, man. I'm pretty um, much out of how free over here. We got to get together for a barbecue. Uh, <laughs> That, uh, it, that means you're gonna have to uh, uh, contribute to the TSA and get on a plane, Eric. Oh hell no! I'll, I will <laughs> drive all the way down there. Oh, it's, gonna, it's gonna take a few days. Nothing yet. Yeah, okay. will. Hey. <laughs> oh man, that's a, that's a hell of a drive, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. It's like 2,500 miles or so. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Skip the zone, right? <laughs> oh my god uh such a good talk man all, all right. right well thanks everybody for deep sync diving with us and you know we started out talking about black lives matter kind of but we just we went all over the place because there's there's so many tendrils to that movement and and i think a lot of people get get tunnel vision with it and and hopefully this episode will just show like is there's, there's like a 
a wide angle lens that you really need to look at when when you're talking about who matters because because it's it's true that all lives matter absolutely you know but but if you don't actually think that and you're saying that you're a dick you know <laughs> black lives well, have to matter yep all exactly because black lives matter Asian lives matter, Mexican, Puerto Rican lives, my Indian partners, my everybody, my white partner, all of us. But black lives don't quite matter just enough yet. So all lives can't really matter until we we all inclusive. But, yeah. but in there, man, like, you know, I got brothers like you and Eric, man, I love y'all. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's you, you know, it's gonna take y'all to help us in this fight, man. And yep. No, yeah, right. it's like yeah. it's like when whenever I Definitely. whenever I say all lives matter, it's not ironic whatsoever. <laughs> like that personally to me is a true statement. You know, like I I want I want that saying to not have the effect that it has. You know, I I want to take that statement and and co-opt it to actually mean what it says. You know, I I want us all to someday be able to say that and have it be true, you know? Well, yeah, and like Martin Luther King said, you know, well, I, I don't think he actually said, but let's all get along. Um, <laughs> no, no, that was Rodney King said. <laughs> Rodney, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rodney King. Oh, that was yeah. another thing where, you know, Martin Luther King did say, "Judge not a man by the color of his skin, but the content of his character." Yes, yeah, exactly. And I, I think that's a good point to end on. Yeah. Um, Same basic oh, message, however you want to say it, as long as you mean it, yep. you know, you're on the right path. You mean it, and you live it. Yep. Yeah, and that's the only way, man. So, yeah. Man, it's getting late in the late over here for me, guys. Yeah. Mm. yeah. All right. Well, uh, we'll um, we'll definitely have to do this again uh, sooner than later. And, and I'm, yo, yeah. I'm gonna have y'all on the something for everybody podcast too, man. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. We'll definitely have a have a link to your channel. Same channel, right? Yep. Yep. All right. So we got check the description. We got Ocean Ghosts. We got something for everyone. Is that, is that something for everyone. Go with Uncle Phil. Yes, sir. I'll 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 shoot you later, man. All right, man. Uh, All right, you say it, Have a good night. Yeah. All right, John. Have a good one. Bro. All right. See you guys. Peace out. All right.